Italian humanist Galeotto Marzio, who visited Hungary several times and composed an anecdotal biography about King Matthias Corvinus, the excellent vice visitor's sayings and deeds of King Matthias, among others, praises also the Royal Library in this work. Galeotto describes in the 24th chapter that the king, following the customs of the Hungarians on New Year's Day, used to present the members of the court, including the cook, musicians, and other craftsmen, so that everybody receives a gift from the king into his stool. At one of these events, also Galeotto was present. Thus, at some point, the king turned to Galeotto and asked him, Why don't you offer to me your instrument in order to accept my present? When Galeotto answered, because he didn't have such tools, the king added that his tools were his books, which ornate his library. Galeotto immediately brought his books, which he dedicated to the Corvinian library, and he alone was gifted with much more golden and silver coins than all the others. Galeotto concludes this chapter with the praise of the king, whose behavior illustrates that the king gave presents to his courtiers out of habit, but he patronized his scholars following the judgment of his soul, which was a real royal virtue. Galeotto was not the only one who panegyrized the king's library and his Renaissance type of art patronage. Several contemporary and posterior poets, historians, and travelers reported about the famous Biblioteca Corvina, which by the 1480s became rival of the collection of the Medicis at Florence or that of Federico da Montefeto in Urbino. King Matthias, who ruled the Hungarian kingdom between 1458 and 1490, was the first king beside Italy who imported the Florentine Alantica Renaissance style into his kingdom by commissioning artworks from Italy and by inviting Dalmatian and Italian artists and scholars into his court, following also the footsteps of his predecessors who always cherished good relationship with Italy. The coronation of these cultural and financial links was when the king married Beatrice of Aragon, the daughter of Ferdinand I, king of Naples. The king fulfilled the ideal of Arma et Literi as well. The beginnings of Renaissance art and humanism in Neo-Latin literature in Hungary was closely interlinked with the idea of an expected crusade and generally with the fights against the Turks. Thus, the local intellectual historical changes must be all investigated in the context of the contemporary political conditions. King Matthias followed his father's successful battles against the Turks, so he quickly obtained the heroic role of Europe's main hope and defender of Christianity. In my paper, I will present the website of the Biblioteca Corvina Virtualis project, and within this, I will talk about the history of, new of the library itself, focusing at the end on the codices containing works of 15th century Neo Latin authors. But first of all, it must be explained why the project is called Virtual Library, besides its digital online features. After King Matthias' death from 1490 onwards, the, the development of the library came to a halt, yet the collection remained the treasure of the palace. The following kings proudly showed their guests around the library hall and even gave away some volumes as present. The surviving volumes are mainly these that were transported to Western Europe already before 1526, mainly by the humanists arriving from Vienna. The collection was finally destroyed during the Ottoman invasion most probably after the Battle of Mohaj, when the Turks had sacked also the royal palace of Buddha. The rest of the codices were taken to Constantinople as part of the loot. Scholars of early modern period maintained the memory of the Biblioteca Corvina. For instance, Johann Alexander Brasticanus, the humanist scholar based in Vienna, wrote an account of his visit to Buddha in 1525, which was a crucial record. From the 16th century, the reign of Matthias was considered in Hungarian collective cultural memory as a golden age, both in intellectual and in political terms, and the fame of his royal library played always a symbolic part in the representations of the glorious period. In those historical times when Matthias Corvinus' memory came to a limelight, even efforts had been made to regain the remnants of the collection from the Ottomans. However, it was centuries later that the few volumes still kept in the top capitalis were returned to Hungary. Ottoman sultans donated them to Hungary at the end of the 19th century. Only a few Corvinas remained in the territory of Hungary during the centuries. In addition to Turkish donation, it was the Venice Agreement, concluded in 1932 after the breakup of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, that resulted in a significant expansion of the collection, as certain treasures of Hungarian origin, kept still in Austrian collection, returned to Hungary. 
So the main purpose of the program entitled Biblioteca Cordina Virtualis is to offer a platform where the surviving items of the famous collection are reunited, even if only virtually. The Cordina website was launched in 2018 by the National Széchenyi Library, which itself preserved 30, 37 Corvinas in Budapest. The content service is a renewed version of the Corvina website, created originally in 2002. The National Library became the center of scientific research related to the Corvinas, and from time to time organizes exhibitions, conferences, and publishes volumes from this field, for example, the series of the Supplementum Corviniano. The editor-in-chief of the portal is Edina Jupan, one of the leading experts of the Corvinas and research fellow of the National Library. The National Library itself has been identified in a way as the heir of King Matthias Library, which is symbolized by the collection's location as well, because the building of the present library can be found in the Buddha Castle in the close neighborhood of the former Renaissance Palace. In addition to providing a full visual presentation of the entire codices and to a small extent to the, of the incunabula, the content service also aims at serving as a platform for Corvina research which has gained new momentum lately. The magnificently illuminated luxurious codices are considered to be not only per se among the peak productions of Renaissance artworks, but also because these decorated manuscripts are generally the most important testimony from this Hungarian period, which survived, at least in a certain extent, the Ottoman invasion and the damages caused later by the liberation. On the other hand, remarkable even in its fragments, this humanist manuscript collection is one of the constant and significant source groups of both Hungarian and international humanism and neo Latin studies. A unique feature of the library was that it contained not only Latin works, but Greek volumes as well. For example, a great part of the De Ceremonies, attributed to the Byzantine Emperor Constantine Porphyrogenitus, was preser preserved only in the Bibliotheca Corvina. The Greek, Greek manuscripts were copied long before the Latin ones, but they were also acquired usually in Italy. And since they were old damaged codices in poor condition, after their arrival to the Corvinian library, they underwent a sort of restoration in the royal workshop and they received the so-called alla greca, Greek style binding. The distinction between the different types of binding was not only practical, but also aesthetical. The visitors of the library could immediately recognize the value of the precious Greek codices. The Greek Cardinals have been studied thoroughly recently by, by András Német, former researcher of the Hungarian National Library, now keeper of the Greek manuscripts in the Vatican Library. Német could even newly identify some deep Greek manuscripts as Corvina volumes. In the case of this volume, the Corvina website directs us to the keeper's location, namely to the Österreichische National Bibliothek, where this manuscript was digitized. Now I'm showing intentionally print screens uh, in a void. Uh, to avoid any um, possible uh, technical complications, but I will soon switch also to the website. So now this is the case where uh, uh, the Corvina website directs us to the uh, UMB. For Neo-Latin studies, its content is important because the homilies of St. Gregorius Nazian Zenus, this codex you can see now, was edited by the German humanist Willibald Kirchheimer from this codex. Neymar based his identification by discovering the typical local codicological features on it and similar technique of restoration, as was examined in the case of the De Ceremonies of Constantine Porphyrogenitus. Surviving pieces of the Corvina Library, approximately 220 Corvinas, are kept in libraries across Europe and in the United States. This, this map shows only Europe, I'm sorry. Uh, in the States, there are two, two places, Yale University Library and the New York Pierpont Morgan Library. The website displays 20, 35 items. Some include, since included in its register were also the codices about which it was convincingly proved by Angela de Lombusti some years ago that they might be identical with the codices that had been made for King Matthias in Florence originally but they had not reached Hungary because of the king's death, and later they made their way to the library of the Medici family. 55 Corvinas are kept in five public collections in Hungary, 37 out of which are in the possession of the National State Chain Library. In addition to data sheets of all the Corvinas, what you can see now, um, uh, it uh, gives the shelf mark, also the keeper location, 
and the title um, or any any other important uh, information uh, that we know about the codex, if the scriptor is known or if the illuminator is known, the provenience, state of illumination, binding, uh, and so on. Um, there is uh, a continuously expanding expand, bibliography as well. Uh, you can see on the right uh, side, uh, it's, it's searchable according to these uh, certain category, categories. And if uh, uh, one of the items uh, is available uh, online, uh, you can click on it and one may find uh, even familiar faces like Mark Lawrence and Fabio della Schiava among the cited uh, items uh, uh, because also the, the Roma Instaurata uh, of Biondo Flavio was kept in the, the Corvina library so uh, uh, they must have uh, uh, taken into consideration uh, also uh, the Corvina item when, make, when making this uh, uh, checklist. Several other curiosities Corvinas kept in Hungary as well as those kept in Wolf and Rüttel in the Herzog August Bibliothek. Uh, so these all will be displayed in the first phase of the renewal of the Serb service. The editors also collected availability information on all the Corvinas from 80 items that have been published by international people collections on their own website. The portal thus provides links to other sites with a digitized Corvina is available there. In cooperation with members of the Hungarian and international Corvina research communities and Corvina Keeper collections, in the coming years, National State Chain Library would like to keep on updating the information and data displayed on the website and would like to display as part of this service as many virtual versions of the Corvina codices kept in Europe and the United States as possible. So let's see now on the home page what does this mean, how does it work? For example, uh, this is the Philostratus Corvina, which is uh, one of the most outstanding pieces of the Corvina library, with its gilded double title page and with its other six title pages. Its uh, left title page is remarkable from our point of view because at the end of the table of content, the library is mentioned as well as Corvina Biblioteca uh, from the bottom, it's the, it's the second row. Uh, but now I uh, switch. Uh, to the website and please give me a feedback. Can you see now the website? Okay. So um, the, the Philostratus Corvina uh, is kept in Budapest in the National Library. Therefore, the website contains the digitized version of the entire volume. The page of this item consists, uh, what you can see here, uh, an entry type description, uh, which informs the user about the text and illumination and uh, Again, this uh, data sheet. Sorry, we cannot see the website. I think uh, it's the uh, PowerPoint presentation still. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, now, can you see it? Yeah, no, it's perfect. Okay, so so this is uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, Philostratus Cor uh, Corvina. Uh, uh, on the website, um, which, uh, which, it ha which has this uh, uh, entry type of description, which informs uh, the visitor about the most important uh, information related to the content and the um, uh, illuminator um, provenience, again. And uh, uh, since uh, it is kept in the National Library, it contains the entire uh, digitized uh, uh, pages. Um, so. I'm going to sh uh, uh, show you uh, this now to you. Um, and also um, what is interesting uh, that you can um, um, filter, um, uh, so search uh, among the uh, uh, pages according to, you can see on the left side, according to these given uh, categories, so if you are interested uh, on, on, a, on a page which contains King Matthias portrayal, um, you can uh, click on it and uh, uh, see, um, see his uh, Roman type of uh, coin type of Roman uh, portrait, which reflects this typical uh, Alexandrian lion, lion physiognomy, which was very uh, uh, typical uh, for, for King Matthias uh, 
representations. And uh, so you can filter uh, also uh, on uh, the, the coat of arms or initial or, or uh, uh, other categories as well. And uh, you can uh, see in different uh, views uh, the, um, the digitized uh, pages. Um, and uh, beside this, uh, uh, the, beside the digitized pages, uh, uh, in the library service uh, for, for the uh, very representative uh, codices, there is a separate gallery of decorative uh, photos um, where you can uh, see uh, very uh, good quality photos uh, uh, from, the, um, uh, from the pages. And uh, there is the bibliography uh, just for, for this uh, item. Uh, and uh, there is uh, the fourth uh, menu item here is the description of binding, um, which is uh, very important uh, in the history of the Corvina Library uh, and uh, special experts of, of, uh, of uh, Renaissance binding uh, made these descriptions uh, uh, documented with photos. Um, and also, uh, this was uh, heavily damaged, so there is a documentation also not uh, only about the technique uh, and present um, condition, but also uh, there is a documentation uh, about the rest restoration uh, of, of the whole volume and, and the binding. Well, one may ask why binding is such an important topic that it merits a separate menu item. In the Corvinian library, book binding had a special role as this activity formed part of the ruler conscious library development program. Uh, can you see again my uh, PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, the first page, first slide. Okay, so I, I go uh, back to it. Yes, so uh, this is about the, uh, this is an original uh, uh, binding of the Corvina Library. Uh, the codices received in the local workshop at Buddha yielded leather binding, but we can find in rare cases also velvet and sealed bindings as well. The richly decorated gilded leather bindings became a trademark of the Corvinas. According to recent research, the last years of King Matthias' reign after 1485, witnessed the most significant expansion of his library, as it was at this time that the king's library had become part of the royal representation. The expansion and development of the royal library has also been, um, sorry, the, the, the expansion and development of the royal library was supported by the copying, book illuminating, and book binding workshops set up in the royal court of Buddha. Uniform binding types of the royal library had also been created there. No data have survived about the workshop, but most probably one or more bookbinders who had been either Italian born or had studied in Italy work there. Returning back to the Philostratus Corvina, I've chosen as an example this particular manuscript because it illustrates well how interdisciplinary the research of the Corvinas is, and this multifold approach is reflected on the informations and data and search options provided by the Corvina website as well. The complete investigation of this, and, and usually that of the other Corvinas as well, includes art history, paleography, manuscript studies, and the history of humanism and neo-Latin literature likewise. The Philostratus Corvina contains the works of the Athenian sophist Philostratus Flavius and his nephew, the biographies of Homeric heroes and lives of the sophists, letters and the description of, paint, of, of paintings in the Napolitan gallery, in the Latin translation of Antonio Bonfino, who served as, he served as the reader of King Beatrice and later as court historian of King Matthias. As we learn from uh, Bonfini's preface, the Greek original was handed over to him by the court librarian Taddeo Boletto during the successful siege of Wiener Neustadt in 1487. Bonfini mentions also the following triumph, which according to art historians is represented on the title page as well. That's what you can see now. The Latin text and the content of the manuscript were studied thoroughly by the Hungarian art historian Arpad Nico, and the quality of Bonfini's translation, moreover his translation technique itself, was examined by the Hungarian classical philologist Gábor Bolognai. 
The Corpus Philostrateum was the discovery of the Renaissance, and Bonfini was not the only one who made an attempt to translate the Greek verse to Latin. Research on the Corvina Library focused for a long time rather on the art historical interpretation, style, and iconography of these illuminations. But with the development of Neo Latin studies in Hungary, literary historians started to pursue research on the texts themselves. In the case of this Corvina, it was related, first of all, to the collation of the Greek original and the Latin translation. But the result of the comparison turned out to be rather disappointing, as it has been revealed that Bonfini's knowledge of Greek was not deep enough to translate Philostratus properly, and that almost one third of the text is unintelligible. It is quite thought-provoking that this lavishly decorated manuscript, which represents the king's political ambitions perfectly via its images, contains a text providing hardly any pleasure for its readers, which supports the idea that the Corvinian library was meant to serve propagandistic rather than scholarly purposes. After the iconographical and philological question, the third aspect that must be taken into account is the provenience of a given Corvina. The codicological examination of the Philostratus Corvina has revealed recent novelties in this respect too. While the illuminated manuscripts arrived into the Royal Library partly from earlier collections of kings or prelates, a substantial part were commissioned by King Matthias himself from Florence, but it is also well known, as I mentioned it, that even Buddha, in Buddha existed a local workshop with scriptors, bookbinders, and also with illuminators. Their task was not only to decorate the pages, but also to paint on the title pages the coat of arms of the king or that of Beatrice as a sign of possession, or we may also say as a kind of trademark. The role of the Buddha workshop is placed in the history of the library, and with the production of the manuscripts has been revised and revalued recently to a great extent. The results of this research were presented in an exhibition organized by the National Library in 2018, the curator of which was Edina Jupan, the editor-in-chief of this virtual Corvina library website. The Philostratus Corvina has belonged so far to the group of those volumes which were thought to be partly or entirely completed in Italy, but it seems, however, that in this case both the copying and the illumination were created in the royal court, which was, for us uh, Hungarian art historians, uh, quite a, a big... Uh, uh, um, sensational finding. Uh, I'm sorry, I I just uh, tried to go back uh, to the... Uh, yes, uh, can you see now again the website? Uh, yes. Okay, so um, this topic directs us back again to the website because as an extra content, the 3D record of this exhibition is available on the website which was uh, organized in 2018 about the Buddha workshop, where visitors can look around in the three rooms of the exhibition. Uh, to read uh, the text uh, which were on the walls or to click on and zoom in the exhibited items and to see the main pages. Uh, so, for example, here we can search again the Philostratus Corvina. Uh, so you can click again uh, on this Corvina and uh, also the other six title pages uh, were uh, digitized and there are the descriptions uh, in Hungarian and in English. Uh, so you can, uh, you know, walk around in this uh, uh, virtual exhibition and click again on other uh, items and to see their, uh, the photos and the, the uh, other uh, descriptions um, also, if it's available about the, um, the given Corvina. It's, for example, this one. Okay. 
Okay, now I would like to um, uh, remain for a while uh, here at the um, website and uh, show you the other main important menu items uh, of, the, of the website. So, uh, so far I've, I've shown you one particular uh, uh, page of, of the Corvina. Uh, uh, so you can see among uh, the menu items uh, uh, that uh, you can see uh, virtual, uh, uh, below virtual Corvinas, uh, uh, there is a list uh, of all the digitized Corvinas and you can search on it uh, uh, and also uh, filter uh, by uh, the keeper location. And uh, about uh, the Corvina uh, research, uh, uh, the website provides uh, also many information uh, and also uh, it tells uh, a lot about uh, what are the criteria for, for the uh, Corvina, what is the definition of the Corvina, uh, what is the history of the library, about the scriptures and also about the, the history of the uh, research uh, itself, uh, bibliographies. And uh, the multimedia uh, menu item uh, represents uh, uh, YouTube videos. And uh, my favorite one uh, is uh, uh, a video uh, in which uh, uh, one um, colleague of the National Library uh, made the croppy of the frontispiece of the Trapezuntius Corvina uh, and uh, uh, I really uh, uh, suggest you to um, uh, have a look uh, at this because uh, uh, it's really interesting. You can uh, follow uh, how uh, was the uh, making of, of a whole codex uh, with the, 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 the rowing, the, the lining, the, um, the, the initials and and uh, the decoration was, was, was created. And uh, I tried to uh, start the video. Um, takes a few seconds. Okay, I don't want to, uh, or maybe, yes, it has started. So you can see how the, the gilded layers uh, are made, uh, or uh, scribing initials. So I think it's a, it's a very interesting, uh, uh, experience uh, for those who are not familiar uh, with codicology or, or uh, book, book illumination. Um, okay, now I uh, go back uh, to the um, Can you see my uh, uh, PowerPoint again? This is still the website, I believe. Okay. Okay, now we have the PowerPoint. Okay, so in the final paper of my paper, I would like to draw attention to some of the most important Neo Latin works in the library. The Biblioteca Corvina included the works of classical authors and those of the Church Fathers, as well as contemporary works dedicated to King Matthias. These volumes can be divided into certain thematic groups like historiography, panegyrics, or astrological, astronomical works, philosophy, and so on. Bontini was present not only with his translations, but also with two original works as well. The manuscript of the Symposium de Virginitate et Publicitia Coniugali is one of those that Bontini brought with himself when arrived to King Matthias' court in 1486 and handed over to Queen Beatrice in order to offer his services services to the court. This Corvina manuscript is the only extant copy of this work which was used for its 20th century edition as well. Earlier studies has, have already revealed the compilatory technique of Pompili. Moreover, a recent project has demonstrated new layers of intertextuality, namely plenty of citations from Cardinal Vessarion, 
therefore currently a completely new online edition of this work is being prepared in order to identify the hidden quotations or paraphrases. Both Finney's efforts and dedications were later honored by the king when he commissioned from him von Finney uh, to compose the history of Hungary entitled Rerum Hungaricarum Decades. Until the end of the 18th century, this had been the primary source for Hungarian history and for the reign of Matthias in the European academic thought. Both the Symposium and the Decadis, and also other contemporary works were edited in the 20th century in the series called Bibliotheca Scriptorum Medire Tendisca Eivorum, which is edited by the Institute for Literary Studies. And uh, here, just briefly, I'm mentioning that uh, hopefully at the next uh, Congress uh, of INLS 11, uh, we will talk about uh, uh, during a special session about the history of this uh, series and about the most important ongoing uh, uh, projects. And uh, 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 earlier printed editions are also being digitized of this uh, of, the, of the volumes edited in this series. But now we are preparing. Uh, 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 new online uh, digital editions uh, in this series. This is one example, uh, the letters of Nicolaus Solaus, uh, 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 edited by Emil Kerita Silai. Uh, OK, I, I'm, I'm afraid my uh, I'm, I'm going uh, to the end of my time limit, so uh, I cannot discuss in detail more humanist works of the library. So arriving to the end of my paper, I would like to mention only a few more remarkable texts dedicated to, to the king um, for example, uh, Marsilio Piccino, uh, what you can see here, dedicated his letters uh, to Kim Matthias. This is also one of the most uh, 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 lavishly decorated uh, manuscripts in the Corvina Library. Uh, it, uh, it was uh, arranged and sponsored by Filippo Vallori. Uh, Bartolomeo Fonzio also uh, dedicated his uh, works, uh, among uh, others, the commentary on Perseus. Uh, uh, to the king, uh, so these are all uh, uh, dedications uh, uh, meant, uh, uh, to the, from the authors to the king, and this fontio uh, is uh, precious because it's an autographical uh, uh, manuscript. And uh, the task of fontio, who spent a few months in Buddha, was uh, to to uh, think about the concept of the development of the library. Um, there were plenty of panegyrics written to, to King Matthias, also dedicated by the authors themselves, but he was also famous for his interest in astrology. Um, so here you can see uh, one contemporary astrological work uh, uh, dedicated to him, uh, but also the, the, the Almagesti of, of Ptolemy uh, in the translation of Trapezuntius uh, uh, was found in the library. I began my paper with, a, with an anecdote. Now let me conclude it with a personal remark, in spite of the fact that it is needless to emphasize the importance of digitization in this circle. I had the possibility to hold in my hands Corvinas two times, once in the Vatican Library and later in Bolton Vitae. I didn't pursue research on them, I studied other manuscripts, so I had to ask for a special permission to have a look only for a short time at these marvelous codices. Consequently, I felt so privileged. The Corvina portal with the digitized items and other contents makes available the examination of the manuscripts for anybody interested in them, thus rendering research as comprehensive and international as possible. As the exchange of the codices in the 15th century reflect the network system of the humanists, in a way also this portal connects together the scholars of this field. So I would like to invite and, in, 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 invite and encourage you also to visit it and enjoy it. And thank you for your attention. Thank you.